This is the first time I'm doing this. So we're trying it on here. We're starting with airtime today. If you think about what a spot is and what a live read is, what do you think the difference is? A spot, uh, it's, a, it's a more like a, an ad, an advert. Or a spot is say, more like an a, a or an advert, okay. Then a, a live read, it's what uh, you, you read on a show. It's what you read on a show. Uh, okay, so that's on the right track there, yes. So a spot okay. in essence is what, 30 seconds? It's a 30 second pre-recorded segment, so a spot. And a live read is 30 seconds that we read. The biggest difference, in other words, is that the one is pre-recorded and the other one is not. Why would we use one and not the other? Why would I use a live read instead of a spot? I think we would use a live read because it's read by the presenter and it's not just by the station. So then people who are fans of the presenter will believe it more than just like a spot that's like playing and you hear some random voice doing some sound effects, what, 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 that kind of thing. So big difference between the two there then. If I hear something live, I am more inclined to believe it. When ads come up on the radio, do you actually listen to them? We don't really, hey? I mean, I barely listen to them. Mm -hmm. So we tend to tune out easier. Why? Because when it comes to live reads, there's a presenter reading it, and we are more inclined to believe things and take in what a presenter is telling us because it comes from them. So when they speak, we listen. How long are these spots on live reads on average? I thought you said 30 seconds. Yes. So on average, it's 30 seconds. Okay. So 30 seconds is, is the average for a live read. It's the, third, it's the average also for a spot on air. So we tend to go by that. Um, so what do you think is important when it comes to that? What does it need to work? There are three C's. Okay. That's important here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put it up here on Teams for you. And what I'll do in the, um, for the people who are online is um, I will send it to you. So spot is also called a generic. So if you hear the word generic, it means the same thing. Um, or it might be called classic airtime. Why? Because it's um, not creative. It's not part of creative. It's part of classic generic airtime. Okay. So a recorded message um, that's played out on air during the airtime segment is something that is normally bought by an advertiser. So I buy that 30 seconds. Um, and the 30 seconds is the benchmark length. I can, however, uh, buy airtime from five seconds to 60 seconds, depending, okay, depending on what I, what I need. And we cluster them into ad breaks, which are part of a show. How many ad breaks does the average radio station have? About three, okay? And during breakfast and afternoon drive, they have four. So four different ones that are roughly between three and three and a half minutes. So that means there are seven spots for each ad break. So that's a lot of ads that can play. Normally we don't slot in that many, but you can slot up to seven. The, these ads include um, live reads, so it's spots and live reads. So there are th three things that I am looking for when you are creating a live read, for instance, um, or a spot, okay? And what is that? It must always deliver on the three C's. If you are on your textbook on um, WhatsApp and not on Teams, we are on page 330 of Next Level Radio. Okay. So those three C's are capture, okay, Cur uh, curiosity, and then convert. So that's the three C's. What does that mean? It means the content must capture the attention of my audience. I need to get your attention somehow, okay? This can be achieved through um, a very cleverly crafted scripts, a voiceover, music, and or messaging. So there's a lot of ways that we try and do this. It'll always have a hook. 
right? Most importantly, your hook, you'll always have. Curiosity, um, your content needs to arouse the curiosity of your listener. So you need to make sure that they're curious about what you're talking about in order to encourage their continued listening and even eventually, hopefully, brand buy-in. Lastly, convert. So content must convert the listener from being a passive consumer of the message into an active member of the brand community. So what does that mean? It means I need you to go out and actually buy my product, um, become part of my brand. So um, I need to have a strong call to action, for instance, as well, something that will drive them to do something through converting them. So I need to capture their attention arouse their curiosity with the content and convert them uh, from just passive listening to the stuff into act actually being a member of the brand community. So to actively wanting to form a part of it, convert. Okay. So good radio spot is like a story. Um, you might think you can't tell a story in 90 words, but you can. You can tell a story in... in 20 words um, in two sentences. It depends on how cleverly the copywriting is done. Right? So you need to do it like a story. It needs to have that strong intro. It needs to have a strong hook to draw your audiences in, much like your links. Um, it needs to have something interesting in the middle. So um, like crumbs, things that tell them why they need to care. Um, why this is relevant to them. Why do you need to um, change products? And then something meaningful at the end to encourage them to act on your message shared. And it's not always that easy. I'm aware of that, okay? There are really good spots out there, but there are also really boring spots that we go, oh man, who wrote this thing? So... <laughs> It is about how you do it and how you get that message across. We go. So this is uh, not a 30 second. This is a, um, a little bit longer, okay? So it's 50 seconds. White Star, in partnership with Radio 2000, are proud to showcase homegrown artists at the hashtag Keep Shining Music Experience on the 2nd of September at the Altitude Beach in Jersey. For one unforgettable night, come celebrate South African music with us as we sing along to Marley's greatest hits, dance with the queen of Arapiano, Kaum Pela, as well as the legendary Moby Dixon, Tebe, and many more. To win a double VIP ticket, call into the Drive Connection this week when you hear China, your white star, bring your partner, bring a friend, and welcome spring with a bang with White Star, a proud supporter of South African music. Remember, when it's time to shine, shine out your White Star. T's and C's on radio2000.co.za. Radio 2000. Our music, your memories. So that was a spot. That was a bit longer. Like I said, that's a 50-second spot that we uh, paid for. Um, with the aim of telling people that there's going to be a concert on the 2nd of September and to drive them to this concert because it's going to be a banger. Um, so we're giving you the details of where it will be. We're telling you you can win VIP tickets online next week or this week, um, et cetera. Okay, so it's driving a message. But did you see how important the music is also in this thing and the elements used? It's not just about the voice. And I couldn't have done that with a live read specifically. I could only do that if I did a pre-recorded segment. But along with this, we do have live reads that drive the message um, from the um, <clears throat> consumer's point of view. So it needs to tell you a story. It needs to have a strong hook that can draw the audiences in an interesting middle section that tells them why they care and offers relevance to them and a meaningful end that encourages them to act on this message that we've shared. So why is it that we do this? Why do we have things like spots and live reads um, and generic advertising? Um, I mean, because we know like we all um, care more about impactful messaging, right? It depends on the advertiser. Sometimes 
reach and frequency for them is the most important type, important thing. Other times driving impact and engagement is more important. So that is a big thing that depends. Sometimes I want both. And then you have to include things like um, live reads and spots because that's what helps drive reach and frequency, okay? Um, and we know a great radio advert is worthless without an audience actually listening to it. So media planning and implementation are equally important to the success rate of a, a radio advert placement. So you can't just put 10 spots um, in one, let's say on the 9 to 12 show for one week and think it's going to have a high impact because what is the average ratio? How many times do I need to hear something in order for me to actively take it in? Three. Okay. You need to do something um, in such a way that people will hear it at least three times, which means um, I need to make sure that an ad plays at least three times a day over a seven day period, which brings me to 21, which means I need a spot to play 21 times during seven days in order to make sure that a listener might have heard it. Okay. So that's what we look for in reach and frequency. So your frequency you look for is um, quite high in order to make sure that listeners can hear it. Okay. So media planners will look at a brand's desired audience along with radio stations audience. So we will then look at the best times and channels and environments in which messages could be shared. Um, so there's currently like uh, this campaign that we are working with on at the moment that's got a complete flow plan that in essence, what that means is it tells us how many times things are running, where they're running, et cetera, et cetera. Um, from TV to radio. Why? Because the main game, um, well, aim at the end of the day is to have as high impact as we possibly can. And for that to happen, I need to not just have things on one element. So the, for this thing, for instance, we are doing it on um, multiple platforms to make sure that um, it will actually increase reach and frequency. So apart from what we call above the line, above the line refers to radio, TV, and print, if there is something like that, or uh, social media elements that is part of that, okay? Um, and then you have digital always, That's that also forms part of it. So we're doing things like a TikTok challenge separate. We're doing separate digital things to also increase uh, brand relevance using influencers and micro influencers. But for instance, um, for this biggest breakfast that's taking place on the 26th of September, we are using the morning live show. We are using the morning show on ETV. Um, we are using different shifts because it's breakfast um, where we have posts from them running. Then we have an, a launch interview. We have simulcasts on two radio stations. Then we have live reads, but 10 second throw forwards. All that that will do is drive the message. Okay. So if you have 10 or 15 seconds, you're in essence only doing throw forwards okay, to things that are happening. Then we have actual 30 second live reads that are driving the message on different radio stations. And we have social media posts on um, four different radio stations and influencer posts. So why is this important? Because this is there for reach and frequency. This is there to make sure that we cover our bases in terms of the audience that um, the specific client is looking for, okay? so. Reach and frequency is always something important. It's not something that you need to ever um, work out yourself. There are lots and lots of programs out there, um, especially by Nielsen is one of them that do that. Um, so we use these programs to help and assist us with our reach and frequency. Uh, reach is extremely important as it offers the advertiser a chance to connect with as many listeners as possible. I want to reach the whole world if I can. Keeping in mind who your target market is that you actually want to reach, right? So radio is referred to as a frequency medium because of how easily ads can be bought and how, how effective they can be to share this message. I mean, just take into consideration the top radio stations in 
in South Africa and how many people listen to them on a weekly basis. So I can be assured to reach at least 20 million people if I only use the top um, four radio stations and put ads on them. That's a lot of people. So it means that advertisers can flight their spots. When I say flight or flighting plan, doesn't mean we're going to fly in the air now. Flighting your plan means playing the ads okay? several times a day to make sure that listeners hear it and that they can take in that message. And then once you um, have your message and you have decided on the way that you want to maximize your audience reach, the different stations, et cetera, then you need to consider how this message will be received. Context gets important here then. Okay? Remember content is king, context is queen. Because I cannot have the same ad play across multiple radio stations. First and foremost, there are different languages. So the ad needs to speak to the nuances of that language. I need to take into consideration um, your background with the type of words that I use. Um, I need to take into consideration your age um, in how I phrase this thing. Okay, So context is, is very underrated in the creation of generic advertising, but it's so important. The mindset of your audience, along with your environment um, of your show and the creative messaging of this ad must all work together to ensure that you have optimal impact at the end of the day. Okay. So you have to have to take into consideration your context. Then with regards to live reads, a live read will also contain a brand message and it's scripted and paid for by the advertiser and it also attempts to influence your listeners' feelings about a brand. Um, uh, it's not really that similar from a spot, except that it's not pre-recorded and we can do things a little bit differently in terms of I can try and influence you as a listener. Okay, Live read is live not recorded, read during the same commercial break, okay? The commercial break that we said is um, three to three and a half minutes per radio station, it'll be there, but it'll be at the beginning or the end, not in the middle, okay? So top or tail. Um, why? Because when you go into ads, you want to start with talking. So any live reads will always be first or last, not in the middle. Okay. So executed at the beginning or at the end of the live uh, of the break. Live reads give this perception of a personal endorsement without me having to pay a personal endorsement fee. So as soon as I make a product say, I love this thing, that's an endorsement. And for instance, to give you an idea, if I were to use Glenn on Radio 2000 as an endorser for one minute, only for one minute, I need to pay him, oh, bless me, excuse me, I need to pay him 30,000 Rand on top of the fees that I'm paying for the radio station just for him to say, cool, he is endorsing that product. So it's a lot of money additionally I could have used for, for extra live reads, okay? So um, libraries is a way of getting away from this to not having to endorse this product, but seeming like it is that you are endorsing it. So by presenter reading the library, it provides this level of credibility to the brand, which will hopefully get across to the listener. Sometimes they fumble and you can hear that it's generic advertising. Sometimes they do it really, really well. Live reads are more expensive than generic adverts, okay? Because they add what is called a 50% loading fee. So whatever the cost is of your advert, let's say your ad costs 100 Rand a spot. Um, you need to put 50% on top of that as loading fee for this thing. So you need to make it 150 Rand to start with. So if it's 10,000 for a spot, it becomes 15,000 for a live read, okay? So in other words, when you buy five live reads, they would cost more than five 30 second spots would, like I said now, they would cost 50% more. So um, five times 30 seconds times two and a half in essence, because the presenters are now lending their voice and their relationship 
um, with their listeners to this message, making it more valuable and therefore more expensive. So can you see both have pros and cons um, at the end of the day? It's all about though, succinct and impactful messaging. The live read campaigns can exist on air for long periods of time, like they do, but the messages should change frequently so that listeners stay interested. I think the best example I can give you is We Buy Cars. We Buy Cars have consistently been advertising in the form of spots or live reads across or over more than 10 years, right? And they have grown. They have grown um, <laughs> a lot over those couple of years because they have been consistent when you hear the ad and they've been more creative now by i don't know making like um buying the rights to certain songs um and using those songs in the background of their um, adverts when they create them um so we don't want to create the same message over and over so repeat it over and over for let's say six months in a row because you're going to you're going to get bored and you're going to stop listening um, if it's repetitive so even if you keep the wording the overall messaging pretty much the same you need to change some elements of this thing you can perhaps do spots and then live reads and then spots and then live reads or you can simply change how you're doing the live reads or you can create donuts um, where you only have to change the middle part every single time. Okay? It's just about not having the same message be there over and over because you're going to stop listening. So consider what message you want the audience to walk away with after they've heard your ad um, and find a way, a variety of different ways that you can deliver this thing. Okay? Um, then you need to include easy to use specific contact information like te telephone numbers, email addresses, um, simple web addresses or social media handles for listeners to follow up. How do you do that? Through a call to action. So once again here, if you say, for instance, let's take my website, so mediabeat.ca.za, you don't have to say www. You have just wasted a couple of seconds there, right? You can literally just... Um, go straight into it without having to mention um, the www part of it. Also, don't overwhelm them. So if your mes message is scripted in a way that highlights your brand, listeners will, will more likely search for the information themselves and reach out. Um, think about yourself. If you hear something that is of interest to you, would you go and Google it? Yes, I, I would go and, and do a research about it, like if I really want to know more about it. What does that mean? It means I don't need to give you all my information um, in my 30 second live read or ad. I can give you snippets of it, get you curious. And if you want to know more, guess what? You all have a phone. You have your phone with you. Um, you can pick it up and Google. I do that all the time. So one great example um, was when I was I was listening to a radio station who were talking about um, people in different jobs, and um, one of the presenters made a comment um, about how um, pretty this person is that is in this position um, uh, who could be a model, but who wasn't. She was a chiropractor and she she gave the um, girl social media handle on air. Guess what I did? I was curious. I took my phone, I went to Instagram and I Google, oh, well, not Googled. I searched for her in, the, in, in, in Instagram, um, which leads right to that point of this is how influential presenters are. If you are curious about something that they're saying, you will go and find the information yourself, okay? Um, I don't need to give it all to you. I can simply give you um, snippets to make you interested. So then from there, um, like I've mentioned, live reads, not usually, always on a commercial radio station will carry a loading fee. So there will always be an extra charge that is added to this spot. 
because they sound like they're part of your show rather than a separate break. And so listeners are more likely to engage with them and it makes it more valuable, like I've said. Um, furthermore, premium pricing discourages advertisers from buying the, these, frequent, these as frequently as they would buy conventional spots. So I don't want you to buy up all my live read spots because I don't want it to lose the value that it has. And if people only start buying live reads, it will go, it will start losing that value. Okay. So it ensures this um, premium costing that you do, the loading fee ensures that live reads are used correctly and not exploited by listeners, even though we do, ex uh, or by advertisers rather, we do exploit, um, uh on air airtime but in the means of power spots for instance but those are way more expensive so for instance um on metro fm i can pay up to 138 000 no more actually but 100 let's say 138 000 rand for a power spot of three minutes that's like a lot of money for a little time, but we'll get to power spots in a in a different um, lecture. Anyway, so how do we base use live reads? We use them when something needs to happen now. If it requires immediate action or urgency, I need you to go out now and go and buy this item now or join me now because it's of urgency. Okay. When something changes or there's an update um, of the information that you have then we will use um, a live read. If there's a public service announcement, we will use live reads. If there's an emergency, we'll insert a live read. If there's an offer that's only available for a limited time period, so um, this offer ends on Sunday, you have to go out and buy it now, kind of a thing. Or if the live read has a particular interest in or relevance to the product. So what are we doing here? It creates a, a sense of personal attachment to the message, to the overall message, right? So the broader message, um, which means it's not living on its own. It's part of a bigger promotional campaign, okay? There's something bigger happening that we are lending this thing to because my bigger message across um, the different elements that I'm using might be to drive a specific competition, but my live read might push the actual product and might push people to go and buy the actual product. Okay, so it lives within the same brand, same product, but it's different um, the messaging that I am pushing using different elements. Okay. So what's the problem with live reads? There is a problem with live reads. Human error. People make mistakes. It's natural. Okay. People make mistakes in how they um, <laughs> read things. There was once a mistake that could have been massive, but luckily wasn't, where, you know, you get different types of cars. So you might get a Hyundai i10, and then you might get a Hyundai i20. And if you, <clears throat> for instance, read on air that there's a sale on a Hyundai i20, and you can get it at this price, for this weekend, instead of reading Hyundai i10, and I come into your store and ask for the Hyundai i20 at this price, and you go, no, no, it's not that, it's the i10, and I go, but it was read on radio station, I heard the ad, the ad said so. There can be a lot of issues there, right? Like, someone is going to have to give this do the car or whoever is buying the car at that price and make up the money and who then at the end of the day will have will have to pay that price. So that's something big to take into consideration um, from a human error point of view. Um, I've also heard people say very inappropriate words on air because the person who scheduled the adverts while he was um, scheduling them um, thought it was funny to just add an additional word there. You know, he, he added the word sex to it and uh, forgot to remove it. And the breakfast presenter did not read the ad off air before reading the live read on air. So read the live read on air with the word in it and then kind of stopped and went, 
what and like started laughing and had to reread the thing without it. Imagine you are the client who paid for that. And this is what you are hearing. I will not be impressed, right? Um, not in the least will I be impressed. So you would have to make it up for me, um, which we'll talk about because there are different ways that you can make it up to me and you're going to have to make it up to me quite big in this kind of a scenario. So radio stations ask for scripts in advance, okay? And they, they have to um, give the go ahead as well. So it goes to the client, client signs it off, then it gets sent to radio station, radio station gives it the okay. Um, they schedule it to give presenters the time to rehearse and establish a tone and manner of presentation that feels more natural and consistent with the station's brand too. Not to say that they all do that. Some of them wing it and you can hear it when they wing it, okay? Um, but if you get it beforehand and you read it beforehand, it helps you prepare for mistakes and errors so that they don't get, um, happen once again. And the shorter the spot, the shorter the script needs to be. So like I've said to you before, uh, average 90, uh, 90 words equals 30 seconds. So meaning that um, if it's a 50 se 15 seconder, it's about 45 words. In your book, it says it's advisable to use approximately 100 words. So I know from um, some experience that it, it uh, I wouldn't necessarily go to that length, okay? It depends on the words. It depends on how slowly the presenter reads. If they are a fast talker, sure, and they are a smooth talker, then they can get away with up to 100 words. If it's on a radio station like Ukozi, Mklobo Wenene, Lesedi, um, Mungana Lonene, as soon as it becomes a different uh, African language, you need to take into consideration, again, nuances and lengths of words and the length of saying the exact same thing in a different language, which means we cut the words down because I know that I need more words for you to give me the same message in a different language as it would take for me to read it in English. All right, so we take things like that into consideration also when we start writing, writing rather these live reads. Um, so a script that's about 81 words long um, is quite ideal because what it does is it gives you plenty of time to share the message clearly and succinctly. So there's an example in your textbook on page 333 of um, a live read here, and I'm going to read it for you quickly. Approximately 400 million people around the world suffer from mental disorders and illnesses. We, have, we all have the power to help promote mental health in South Africa through education. October is Mental Health Awareness Month, so join us on October 15th at the Moses Mobita Stadium for the Mental Health Awareness Expo featuring guest speakers, workshops, art exhibitions, live music and more. Tickets are available at TickKit. Visit XFM's website at xfm.co.za for more information. This initiative is supported by the Department of Health. I personally will be there and I'm hoping to see you there too. So that's kind of that last sentence of me being there. That's a case of if it's something that you do with a radio station uh, or in partnership with, people will add little things like that to your live read. Okay, um, Just to make sure that the uh, all elements are put across and that they can see that um, you are actively engaging in this specific spot of yours um, in what is happening. So if I were to ask you once again, what is the difference between a spot and a live read? What are they? Uh, the spot is a testimony pre-recorded at an, a live read. Uh, it's a it's a it's it's a it's a testimony uh, uh, which is it is being read by a, a presenter on a and thirty uh, seconds, but yes, yeah, thirty seconds, yeah. And uh, a live read, uh, listeners tends to believe it more because it's being read by the presenter which they trust. But the sports, uh, they can simply tune out of the station when the sports is being aired. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Okay. So spot, generic or classic airtime, uh, typically 30 seconds long, can be longer, can be shorter, played within the ad break, which is part of a show clock. Um, it needs to have the three C's of creativity, which is capture, curiosity, and convert. Those three C's are in your book, Next Level Radio on page 330. Okay? So capture, content must capture the attention of the audience. This can be achieved through a cleverly crafted script, a voiceover, music, and or messaging. Curiosity, content needs to arouse the curiosity of you as a listener in order to encourage your continued listening and eventual brand buy-in. Convert, content must convert the listener from being a passive consumer of a message into an active member of the brand community. So that's what needs to be within a spot. And a spot is like a story. It needs to have a strong hook um, to draw you in. An interesting middle section that tells me or tells you as a listener why you should care and it offers you relevant information. And um, it needs to be meaningful and encourage, uh, encouraging you to act on a message right at the end. Okay. So that is your spot and the library then also contains a brand message, is scripted and paid for by an advertiser and also attempts to influence a listener's feelings about a brand. It's read live, so it's not recorded. It's at the beginning or end of a live read break. Gives that perception of a personal endorsement, meaning that they are lending more credibility to the brand, which means they are more expensive. They carry a loading fee of 50%. So again, if it was 100 Rand for a spot, you're going to pay 150 Rand. Or if it was 10,000 Rand for a spot, you're going to pay 15,000 Rand for a live read. Okay. So that is um, pretty much all we needed to go through for today, which is the spots um, and the differences between them. So normally what would happen, like I've told you before, if you have a competition moment, you will have your opening billboard, let's say of 10 seconds right at the start. Um, then you might have your whatever it is, competition thing, whatever. And then you might have your 30 second live read or generic spot at the end again of this thing, just to make sure that my brand message is being um, carried across, okay? So there's a very big difference between um, live reads and spots and sponsorships and branded content which is what we're going to um, start talking about um, tomorrow. So, wow, it's so much shorter if we're not in class and people are asking questions. Wow, this was a really, that was a lot shorter. Okay, well, um, tomorrow I will have my laptop back because I have a couple of um, uh, examples that I want to play you as well. Um, right. I'm so glad that people joined this. They, this is the most people that have ever been online at the same time. Can I just say that? I'm super impressed via Teams and on um, the WhatsApp call. So yay for us. Any questions with regards to live reads and spots and the loading fees and the three C's and um, how or where we use them? I will see you tomorrow morning again. So then you must have a good rest of your day and I shall chat to you again tomorrow morning. I will phone in at 20 past eight. Okay, not quarter past. I will phone you in at 20 past eight. All right, have a good day. Bye. You too, man. Bye. Bye.